What's going on guys, Matt Schaefer back here with another Musaic Audiophile build for you. This one is a Hi-Fi 3 Plus, I would call it, in a BMW X4. So let's check it out. This is a very stealth install. The theory behind this one was to keep everything 100% OEM, functional, practical, feasible. So underneath the floor, again, very easy, stealth, practical, no glitz, no glamour, all the budget in this one really towards performance. Uh, we have a 13 TW5 JL audio subwoofer. This is the thin line subwoofer from JL, 13 inch. And it fits very nicely actually where the spare tire was underneath this floor. Um, you can still access and service the battery right under here. We have our Musaic build plate there showing the details of who installed the audio system. And then we have easy access to the circuit breaker, easy access to the two system fuses. And then we have the side cover. I built this little vent just to kind of circulate some air here, have a little breathing vent, and also had to um, cut some of the back off because the back kind of slopes in, which didn't allow enough space so I had to cut the back of that a little bit, chop it off, because this bulged out a little bit and freed up some area for our two amplifiers here. So this is a Helix V12 DSP amplifier, Helix P1 amplifier. Basically how this works is we have our Toslink input from our SDMI 25, and that is feeding the Helix amplifier here. So the factory amp, basically comes out and the most connection that was feeding that amplifier now plugs into our helix piece uh, and this is basically going to take the signal from the factory radio and convert it to what our amplifier would like to see so it's a digital output from that unit directly to our amplifier giving us a toss link input directly to that helix the uh, analog inputs for this is a different preset that's going to go to our SP2000, uh, Astell & Kern high-res player, and then of course we have our Bluetooth connection, which is basically a little chip that docks into this, allowing this to have high-res Bluetooth streaming. So this is 12 channels out, which is powering our front three ways active, and then our two sets of rear speakers from the factory. It has a preamp output that you can run through the uh, DSP and that outputs to our Helix P1 amplifier, which is in charge for powering our 13 TW5 jail audio subwoofer. So again, very easy, clean, uh, everything installs behind the scenes, super functional, super practical. That's what we always go for. And of course, as you can see there, our vent for our amplifiers. Sub actually sounds great under here. There's a few inches of clearance between the sub and this floor. So actually this floor doesn't vibrate at all. The transfer is really, really good into the interior of the cabin. All right, and now for the interior. Uh, again, very simple. The goal here is to keep everything 100% factory looking uh, with a few little tweaks and modifications. So I'll overlay some pictures of what we did with the door here. Um, in order to sound treat it, the whole window track had to come out, window had to come out, and the inside of the door is completely done in sound shield acoustic treatment, which is a very thick acoustic mat, right? It's like a foam mat. It's not like the thin foil. Really, really well at adding mass on that inner door skin there. And then from there, we basically made adapters to fit the Focal Utopia M three inch mid-range. You've probably seen a lot of videos that we've done on BMWs where we've made A pillars for the different vehicles to get the mid-range up on the dash to give a little bit better sound stage and imaging. But in this case, um, stuck with the factory locations per the customer's request. And then we did the Focal Utopia M tweeters up top. So you can see the badge at the bottom that's actually the OEM badge that I sanded down, took the Harman Kardon logo off, sanded, polished, and then did the Focal on 
the laser that uses a spray from Searmark, which is basically this spray paint that you paint on and then the the energy from the laser is embedding that black into the aluminum. So that's exactly what you see there. Tweeters were actually very, very hard to do because the Utopia M is a very large tweeter and the factory BMW is a very small tweeter. So it took a lot of uh, plastic molding and modification behind this area here in order for that tweeter to fit inside here. So basically I had to make a mount behind the scenes and still get it behind to fit behind that grill there. So I'll overlay some pictures of the front mid base here. They are under the seat as they always are in almost every BMW that you can find on the market. Uh, not the best spot for mid base in my opinion, but like I said, they have made a few little adjustments on this model BMW uh, than I've seen in the past. So what I noticed is actually in the enclosure under the seat, there is a vent that's built into the enclosure that vents into the subframe of the car and it vents all the way up front. So actually when you're outside the car and you're really getting down on this thing, you can hear the air vent out where the front fenders are, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting. It, it solved a few issues generally in this car when they didn't have that it would add a little bit too much pressure under the seat and you would start hearing the seat belt tensioners rattle uh and you know kind of hear all that stuff shake which is an uncontrollable resonance because you can't really isolate some of those ball bearings and stuff in the tensioner from rattling so this actually worked out really well and it's probably why this is one of the better sounding BMWs that I've heard, especially using the factory locations. I've never done Utopia M in this style BMW before in factory locations. So maybe that's a big, big difference. The Utopia M actually has a really great off axis response as far as the mid range. So maybe that's what I'm hearing that is so surprising when I'm listening to this specific system. So as you know, I'm relatively new to the Helix line, and this is a big reason why we picked up Helix and Brax and um, a lot of AudioTech Fisher gear. So this is the main controller for our DSP. And this works with uh, their standalone DSPs, it works with some select DSP amplifiers, any ACO product. This is basically going to control our main volume. So as you can see, I chose Amber, to light up as the main volume. Amber is the OEM color. And hit it once, that's now our subwoofer volume control. Very easy to use, shows you exactly how far up the sub is. Hit it again, now that shows our preset. Preset number one out of three. Preset number one is our factory radio. Again, that is using that Helix SDMI 25 piece in the back, which is taking our most connection from the factory amplifier and converting it to a Toslink output, which is going to our DSP. And it's at that point corrected the signal. It's giving you a flat response, 20 to 20,000 Hertz relative to our volume control here. So works perfect, uh, perfect interface for the car, essentially making this BMW radio an aftermarket radio. Preset number two is basically a digital connection between our phone directly to the processor. So essentially we're skipping all of the stuff that you see on the radio. However, you can still be connected to the factory radio and the uh, HEC BT at the same time. Therefore, you can still see the artist album information on the display here, but you're physically streaming to the HEC BT. Another way that you could do it is through Apple CarPlay and then you just select on the phone the little drop down arrow and select HECBT as the uh, audio output from the phone. So it's a way to get a little bit better audio than you would be getting through preset one. However, anytime that you have a car with a factory interface that can give you a good signal, that Bluetooth source becomes less imperative. Obviously, if we have a car like just say a random Lexus in which there is no amp interface, that Bluetooth module becomes very imperative for very good audio. You're only going to get what the source can deliver at the end of the day. Now preset number three, if we hit it again, 
go to preset number three. Now it shows you in green, we're on preset three. So that is basically our input to our Astell and Kern high res player. So analog out of the player, directly into the processor, and that's going to give us our DSD capability, full flat capability, basically the best digital format of any track available that you can find on the market today. The DAX of this is going to create a pretty big difference in how you're going to perceive the soundstage. Everything is going to become, you know, far wider, far deeper. There's going to be just more time and space, right? So if you're listening to Pink Floyd time and you're listening to all the alarm clocks in the beginning, every clock is going to have its own place and time on the dashboard. It's going to be very obvious exactly where each clock is. And if you had a sheet of paper, and you listen to the beginning enough, you could probably count exactly how many clocks there are and exactly where the locations are, if they're big or, big or small. All of those details become super prevalent based on the separation that you're hearing within the music. Whereas a lot of times when you're listening to things from a factory source with a uh, more compressed media, that music is going to be more compressed, meaning everything is kind of seems layered over top of one another where the drums are over top of the guitarist that might be to the left or right that space isn't changing a ton whereas when you're now listening to it through this the the space of the dash is greatly enhanced making a in my opinion a night and day difference and when we always talk to clients about purchasing speakers like the utopias if you're not doing something like this in my opinion, you're getting maybe 75% of what the speakers can actually do. And a great analogy to that would be buying a 4K TV, bringing it home and playing, playing 1080p through it, right? 1080p isn't going to give you the best picture on that TV, we know that. And when you go to 4K, you're going to see a difference fairly easy. You don't need to be versed in video to see a better picture you just know it's a better picture right you don't have to have video as a passion right because people come up with the stigma audiophile all the time but at the end of the day it either sounds real or it doesn't and there's a progressive scale on how real something sounds right how how much of this are you perceiving as happening right in front of you that is what audio is about it doesn't have to be uh termed audiophile in my opinion because you can you can stick somebody who doesn't consider themselves an audiophile in a car with really good sounding equipment with a good sound stage and they're going to appreciate it and they're going to feel like it makes a massive difference so i would just say that at the end of the day when it comes to you know having stuff like this and you can absolutely perceive the difference you don't have to be an audiophile quote unquote in order to tell the difference between these little nuances on a system like this you're automatically going to know it sounds good and it sounds real and as far as the rear speakers we kept both the Bax factory in this application there's just not a huge need in order to upgrade those to get the return on the investment of what we're spending on the system to make it sound good. So we just left those factory. Again, very simplistic install. Everything is OEM, perceived as OEM, and that's exactly what this specific client wanted. So thanks again, guys, for following all of these builds. Keep them coming. Keep them coming on Instagram. Uh, keep them coming on YouTube. That's where we get a majority of these builds. And if you don't follow us yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the alert bell, that way you're notified anytime a new video drops. If you want to contact me for a build, here is my phone number followed by my email address. These are the two best points of contact to get in touch with me if you do have any questions about a build or questions about product. Also, make sure you check out our Instagram pages. Make sure you give us a follow. Also, we started a new podcast. We're already one season through, about to boot up season two. It's basically for the enthusiast, not really for the installer. So if you're an enthusiast and you're watching these videos because you like car audio or have a past in car audio, maybe you had something when you were 20 um, and you're 40 or 50 or 60 now, we kind of go through the world of car audio, the progression, 
and basically re-educating that crowd, that demographic, to what makes audio good in a car in 2021. So give that a check. It is the Old Fashioned Car Audio Podcast. We've had 12 or 13 episodes the first season and about to do a bunch more. So give that a check. And finally, check out our website, mosaicdesign.com. That will give you a full guide into everything that we do, all the builds that we've done, all the different YouTube videos that we've put out. Everything is linked in a very easy to navigate way in order to search for, make, model, manufacture, whatever it is, to find out what we've done on certain cars. The whole build logs attached, the YouTube videos attached. It is a great source to see exactly what we've done and how we've done it. And like always, guys, thanks for the support and the follow. And until next time, I'll see you later.